as I'm sure you've seen, I've made quite a lot of engines at this point. But the thing is, I don't really have anything to put them on. So that's why today, I decided that I was going to change gears. Now because of its design, I wasn't able to use regular skateboard bearings. So what I did instead, is I came up with this two-piece bushing. Even though it is just plastic on plastic, it actually has very low friction. And thanks to its simple design, it makes it really easy to slip all of the parts on to the output shaft. And don't worry if you're a little confused, I'm going to explain how this works later. Now the input shaft is a little simpler, because all of the gears are fixed to it and will spin at the same speed. As I'm dropping the shafts into the bearings here, it seems like everything is fitting together, so now I can go onto the stage of gluing all the parts together. Right, so now that we have it put together, you can actually begin to see how the powertrain is going to work. When the dog gears are in the middle, no power is going over to the output shaft. But when I move it over into the first gear position, the power moves from the output shaft to the first gear, through the dog gear, and then through the output shaft. When I move it into the second gear position, you can see that the shaft speeds up a little bit. And finally, when I move it into third gear, you can see that it gives us a 1 to 1 ratio. In order to shift the gears around when it's spinning, I'm going to install some shifter forks and a gear lever that's going to manipulate the shifter forks. And as you can see, now we can use it to select the gears. And just to make sure that everything is working, I'm going to put it all together with the flywheel and then do a quick test by hand. It's shifting smoothly and it feels good in all of the gears. Now when I do a quick test by hand, you can see that everything is working just as it should. Although the only thing is, in retrospect, I probably should have added an H gate to the uh, shifter. Although it does shift fine without it, it is a little bit difficult to go from uh, you know the first part all the way over to third. So now that everything is put together, I think we can actually start our first test. Alright, so I have it put to the test block that I always use. And I've used less screws than I normally would, and this is to give it some room to kind of shake around as it spins. But uh, let's go ahead and see if it does anything. Now it sounds a lot like it's trying to start, but it really can't keep its momentum going, and I'll explain this in just a moment. Now one thing I do want to say is that, as you can see in the test, the engine isn't really running, although this is because I actually mistakenly put the flywheel on the output shaft and not on the input shaft. The transmission actually doesn't create a lot of friction at all, so it's not creating too much of a load on the engine. The problem is that the engine isn't really getting any momentum from the flywheel. So if I were to do this again, I actually would have to put the flywheel in between the transmission and the engine. Although you will see in a minute that this isn't so important. Now if you really want to test the strength of your 3D prints, a power drill is probably one of the best ways to do it, and I'll demonstrate this. Now you can see with the power drill, it works really well. The thing that impresses me the most is how well it shifts even under load. Uh, it doesn't grind or anything, it just kind of slips right in and then it grabs the gear, like pretty hard actually. But I had an idea, what if we turn the gearbox around and actually had the output shaft serve as the input shaft? This would mean that gears 2 and 1 would actually serve as overdrives and 3rd would remain just a 1 to 1 ratio. Now let's see how fast we can spin that flywheel, shall we? In order to shift it from lowest to highest, I'm actually starting in third gear and making my way up towards first gear. Oh my god. And because it's backwards, first gear is a 1 to 2 ratio. Every one revolution of the drill is 2 of the output shaft. 
Out of curiosity, and a little bit because I wanted to show off my new watch, I decided to start a timer on my chronograph. Now, it's a little difficult for you to see, but it stopped at a little under 2 minutes, about a minute and 53 seconds or so. Now, after some further stress testing, this happened. That's not good. Now, as fun as that was, that kind of load was a little bit much with this transmission. It did blow the uh, shaft right apart. Although, I was really, really impressed. Even when I was shifting it around violently, going from like high to low gears, it actually held on pretty well, and the transmission is still in one piece. It's also really impressive to me that the uh, dog gears didn't shear off or anything like that. Uh, everything held together great. But I still think that we should take it apart and inspect for any damage, so let's go have a look. The shifter forks still feel pretty good, and they move really easily. And the gears feel like they spin just fine, but let's take it apart and have a closer look at each of the shafts. Everything on the output shaft still seems to be, you know, fine and well, nothing looks out of place. However, things on the output shaft are a little bit of a different story. It's like third gear suffered a bit of damage. Now this honestly has been one of my more favorite projects. I had a lot of fun not only making it, but also shifting through all the gears, and it's honestly really fun to fidget with. I think the other thing too is that it's also really interesting to look at. You can see that it has all these little intricate parts that kind of come together to make, you know, the one whole unit, unlike, you know, some of the other stuff that I've made. I do have some ideas for the future with this, but for now, I'm just going to put it on the shelf with the rest of my favorite projects. Thanks for watching.